And our next question is from Marvin Marshall at the Nighttime News Space Report. Hi, uh, my name is Marvin Marshall. Um, it's, uh, thanks, thanks for taking my question. Uh, what a wonderful launch tonight with the twilight effect and everything. Um, I guess my question goes out to um, the Benji over here. Um, this was uh, the 56th consecutive landing of a Falcon 9 first stage booster, which is so impressive. Um, are there any upgrades being considered for the Falcon 9 now that you guys have found something that has worked so well? Um, you know, very impressive, and you folks are making it look so easy. Well, first of all, I totally agree. Um, I, uh, I, I, I very much love being on console and, and you know, being there right with, uh, with the teams who are, who are really running things and, 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 of course, with our customers who are there on console as well. But this, this time, I, as I mentioned, I had the opportunity to be here with uh, all the payloaders and uh, here at the, the OSB building and Kennedy Space Center and get to watch it from the balcony, and it was amazing. So I, I love these times, the, the time of day for a launch. You can see that, um, see the plume and see so much of the rocket as it catches the sun back up in the uh, – as it gets in the upper atmosphere, it's just gorgeous. So I'm glad you all that you got to enjoy that as well. Um, in terms of the rocket, you know, that it's a funny question, right? You say, Hey, do we, are we upgrading? Is there something we can improve? And the answer is yes, of course, there's always stuff to improve, right? We're doing something wrong in space flight and probably generally in engineering and in innovation. If you're not constantly looking for how to do it better, um, that's very, very important. And in fact, it's critical to safety and reliability. Um, and as important as, you know, we want to be reliable for carrying cargo and supplies to the space station, we look at these science payloads that go up, and these are people's life work or their you know, major part of their career. And so they're super critical. That's got to always make it. And then we talk about flying humans, and safety is paramount. And the way we get to all of that is by being vigilant and by being willing to change, upgrade, improve, and certainly fix anytime we find something that's gone wrong um, or anything that could be better. And so the, the, the short answer, maybe not the long answer is uh, we, we do this we, all the time. And so you're always making little tweaks. Now there's a process for that. We go carefully with our partners and our customers. Um, you know, we are, our, our vehicles are certified. The Dragon is certified for, uh, for carrying cargo and for interfacing to space station. The, the launch vehicle and all of the surrounding services um, are certified for carrying crew. So it's very important that uh, we keep those in certification uh, with NASA, for example, and with other customers. So as we do these upgrades, we go through that process. Um, but uh, it's critical. Awesome. Thank you so much, Benji. Thank you. As a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star one on your phone to enter the queue. And our next question is from Bill Harwood at CBS News. Uh, two from me uh, and one for Dana. And it's just really from some following up from the briefing last night, which I had to listen later uh, on a recording. You mentioned in there about uh, uh, the, the, suite, the seat swap agreement, uh, if it gets approved. And if it didn't get approved, you were saying the deadline was the end of next week. I wasn't sure what you meant by that. Does that mean that if it isn't in place by the end of next week, you have to start considering putting a different crew member on board or exactly what you meant? I just was uh, not clear about that. And for Benji, real quick, you know, since you've been talking and we were looking back through Wikipedia and some other places, and we just, I, I can't find a third uh, Dragon capsule uh, that's operational. I'm just making sure I heard you right and, and uh, haven't missed one somewhere, because I obviously have. Thanks. Okay, so first on the integrated crew agreement, uh, you know, we're um, – uh, trying to finalize that um, here very shortly. Uh, in the meantime, we have kind of been working parallel paths on training crew members to fly um, in, um, uh, you know, multi to have multiple different configurations essentially. And so we've been really closely monitoring the, the crew training and trying to make sure that all the right crew get trained. Uh, and so, you know, in order to make sure the training schedules hold for an early September launch, uh, we would like to have that agreement potted by the end of next week, uh, and that will ensure that the crew members are all in the right places and their travel is all lined up. Uh, so, you know, of course, we're tweaking and constantly looking at it, and, um, you know, Dana's point was that we might have to do some trades uh, later if we get crunched for the training um, and kind of say, hey, uh, for example, Frank Rubio is training um, for Soyuz, uh, and on Crew 5 we have Anna Kikana uh, training uh, for SpaceX. And we need to make sure that they all get the right training, but also um, as a backup plan, you know, have them and their respective backup crew vehicles as well. So 
we might have to make some uh, some trades if uh, our launch dates hold for early September. So that's all she's trying to say is that we're hoping to get all that uh, pot, you know potted by the end of next week so that um, we don't have to sort of sacrifice any of the crew training uh, in order to continue the parallel path. But okay, thank you. And then for Vigia, yes. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You caught me, and I, I <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna claim, you know, uh, lots of travel and and, and late night tonight. <laughs> but you're, you're totally right, and so I hope that we can get the corrected for the other questioner from before too. Um, well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've got, I've got a plus one algorithm running in my brain apparently. So we're, uh, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what you had is correct. No, and just for the record, it wasn't me. It was Stephen Clark at Spaceflight Now that was thinking that. So he thanks you as well. Thanks. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad I got you guys keeping me honest here. All right, and then our final question for this evening is from Marvin Marshall at the Nighttime News Space Report. Awesome. Thanks for taking another question. Um, I, in a uh, quick question here. Um, for Benji here one more time. Um, now, back in the day, SpaceX used to do uh, technical webcasts, um, and I've noticed the past couple webcasts have been uh, kind of short. Is, is there any reason that the you know Starlink webcasts have only been going live about five minutes, uh, you know, T-minus five minutes, and, and are you guys ever going to bring back the technical webcast? You know what? I, I'll, I'll be honest. I have it. That's an interesting question, and I, and I don't have a good answer for it. Um, I, I think, you know, the truth is, is like I mentioned, we're, we're 30 flights this year and we're going to have, you know, you know, 60 for the year. And, and uh, I, I, there's kind of a point here where I think probably, you know, ultimately we want to be like aircraft and airline-like operations and, you know, do a webcast for every time the airplane takes off. Now, I know we're a ways away from that. And, and, and rocket launches are awesome to behold and awesome to pay attention to. So we'll still be, you know, feeding out lots of information there. But I, I don't have a good answer for that specifically. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Well, thank you guys again for taking your questions. Have a wonderful rest of your night, and what an awesome launch. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, and I do want to check we had, uh, and that looks like one other media dropped out of the queue, so I think we're uh, good there. And I think that'll bring us to the end of our question and answer portion. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and end the call. But uh, you can follow more along this mission by tuning in to our Space Station blog, you can follow us online at, at underscore Space Station on Twitter. We'll have live coverage on Saturday, July 16th, beginning at 10 a.m. on NASA television, the NASA app, and the NASA website for the 11.20 a.m. Eastern time docking of the SpaceX Dragon to the International Space Station. Thanks all for joining us, and have a good evening. Thank you for your participation. Participants, you may disconnect at this time.